God is a just God. He knows who is wrong, who is right. What you need to do is to make things right before you to start that fasting. Don't enter into the way you still have people in your heart. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You are the medication for our issues and our problems. The very same way we go to the hospital to seek for medication for our sickness, Lord. You are the medication to our problems, to our issues, to our failure. Oh, mighty God, you are our medication. That's why we came to drink the medication so that you can get healing oh father healing of our issues healing of our problems healings of our difficulties in the name of Jesus Lord arise and speak to this congregation speak to these people let us just be simple vessels that you are going to use to communicate your true will we bind every spirit that is not yours we command them to leave this place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ so that you alone may be glorified this morning in Jesus mighty name we pray and we say Amen can somebody give Jesus a round of applause Welcome in the presence of God. Do you mind helping me to welcome the person just next to you? Tell him and tell her you are welcome in the presence of God. Thank you for your comfortable bed, <clears throat> for leaving your comfortable house, and to come all the way to listen to the word of God. God bless you. We don't really take it for granted. We really appreciate that God bless you. And you did well because you are obeying the word of God. That says that uh, you will work for six days and the seventh day shall be the Sabbath of the Lord. You shall go and glorify the Lord. It is so important for you to be grateful to the Lord for what he is doing in your life. There is nobody among us who can raise up his hand and say, the Lord hasn't done anything to me. The Lord has done everything to you. The breath of life that you are having, the strength, the good health, the ability to walk to come here and to be with us in the service is just showing how good the Lord has been for you and for me. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. We are going to continue what we started last Sunday. We have been sharing about how to fast for result. How can you fast for us to get result or to get outcome? good outcome because i believe everyone who is uh, deciding to fast you are you are expecting god to do something you don't want just to fast to deprive yourself from food from drinks and then just to find out that it is for nothing unless if you have decided to do it just to slim and then if you are doing it for slimming it is not fasting anymore it's just a fast it's just i mean a fasting for slimming hallelujah we define what was fasting and we said that uh, in the Bible, many people fasted. We saw queens fasting. We saw kings fasting. We saw uh, population fasting. We saw poor fasting. We saw rich fasting. But all of them had one thing in common. They fasted when they were in a very big trouble. When they tried any other thing and it was not working, that's why they went into, into fast. And we understood that fasting, it is a secret weapon of Christian. That is our weapon that we should not just take for granted. We should use it with caution and we should use it properly so that it can produce to us result. Hallelujah. Because if we just fast anyhow, we might not get proper result and uh, we saw that people fasted for many reasons they fasted for many reasons um 
But maybe let me re 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 remind you about what is fasting. We say <clears throat> fasting is the fact to abstain from all or some kind of food or drink while praying for a period of time. So it is that when you refrain, you stop eating, drinking, any food or all food uh, and drinks for a period of time just for you to pray and to seek the face of God. That is fasting. And we saw that uh, fasting, we, is not, it did not start with us. It started with our father Moses. Moses, he was the first person who fasted. He, he started fasting, but him, he went for a very long fasting. A two set of 40 days. I'm not going to come back to that. We saw Queen Esther who fasted as well. They were in trouble. They fasted and God gave result. We saw Daniel. Daniel fasted as well. And we saw God intervening in their life. We saw in the New Testament, Paul and Silas and other uh, people of the, the church of Antioch. They fasted as well. And they saw the hand of God. And uh, we also say that uh, fasting is not an old thing. It's not old-fashioned. Fast, fasting is of actuality. Fashion is of the news. We went in the Bible and then we saw that uh, uh, Jesus spoke about fasting. He said that people should fast. He even told us how we should do to fast. Hallelujah. He told us how we should do to fast. So fasting is not something that is already gone, that we don't need to fast anymore. Jesus fasted for us is enough. Jesus said that uh, when him, the groom, will be taken away, the disciples shall fast. And right now, Jesus is taken away. He is in heaven. That's why we need to fast. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then we say now, if we want to fast, we need to do it in a proper manner so that we may receive result. Hallelujah. We must do it in a proper manner so that we may receive result. We say that the first thing when we are fasting, we must know why are you fasting. Don't just fast by fasting. You must have an aim. You must have an objective. You must have a target when you are fasting. And it is you who have to, to give yourself a target depending on what you want God to do or what you are going through. We saw people in the Bible like Queen Esther and the people of Israel. They wanted deliverance from the hand of a, a wicked man named, named Aman. And they prayed, they fasted for three days, and God intervened. We saw also a city of Nineveh who prayed also the entire city with their king, the entire country with their king. They also fasted because they wanted forgiveness. They wanted the hand of God who was coming upon them to kill, to pass over. They wanted to pass over. They prayed, and God answered their prayer. We saw in the New Testament, there are people who fasted and they wanted to know the will of God about two people. And God spoke to them. So that's the first thing. We must know why are you fasting. Don't fast just for fasting. Know why you are fasting. The second thing we said, if you are fasting, it is important for you to have terms and conditions of that fasting. And we say terms and conditions in terms of time. When are you going to fast? From when to when? Very important. The length of your fasting. And we say also it is important for you to determine how are you going to do the fasting. There is what is called the dry fasting whereby you don't drink and you don't eat. It is a dry fasting. But it's also another fasting whereby you can say let me drink some water. There is also another fasting where you say I will eat but I will only eat fruit. Or I will only eat vegetable. And all those kind of things. So it is important for you to have terms and conditions. Those are the things that are going to give strength to your fasting. It's very important. And we say that uh, if you look in the Bible, people who fasted, they had terms and conditions. This woman who was a queen, Esther, she said that go and fast for three days in Susa and don't eat and don't drink for three days. So it was clear. The Bible says when the spirit of the Lord took Jesus in the wilderness, he told Jesus, he should go and fast without eating. Now, there are some biblical comment, who are doing com comments of the Bible. They are saying that Jesus was drinking water. Okay, the Bible didn't say that. It just said he should go and fast without eating. 
Then they are saying that since there was no eating, then for probably there was drinking. Okay, anyway, but those are terms and conditions. Even if he was drinking, but that was in the terms of condition that he presented to God before starting the fasting. And we say fasting can come from yourself, but fasting can also be a divine convocation. Moses fasted. Jesus fasted. They had a divine convocation. Meet me at the mountain. But Queen Esther fasted because of their own problem. So you don't only fast because God says you should fast. You can also fast by your own conviction, seeing that, oh, things are tough, I can fast. And I want to end this, this morning also that fasting can be an individual fast, but it can also be a corporate fast. You can fast yourself without your wife, without your husband, without your parent, without your children, without your church member, you decide that, okay, because this is my problem, this is my issue, I am going to fast. I am going to fast according to the Bible for three days. That is you. So when you are fasting, do not create problem to us who are not fasting. You must leave us alone. We must eat our food. If you are the mother of the house, because you are fasting, don't make the entire house to be fasting with you. If we, if we do not agree. Remember the Bible says, two people cannot walk together if they did not agree. Agreement is a key. The agreement is a key. You need to agree. Hallelujah. So you can also have a corporate fasting. Corporate fasting like the one we are going to start from the 28th of this month. 28th of November, we are starting a corporate fasting. We're going to have an agreement. You and me we will agree that we'll fast for 14 days. 14 days, we will fast. We will tell you the terms and conditions. We will agree. We already agree on the length. We already agree on the place. We already agree on who should fast, all the members of Burning Bush Bible Church. So if you have somebody in your house who does not belong to the church, who doesn't want to fast, don't kick him out of your house. Because he doesn't belong here. Maybe they fasted before you or whatever. No. Hallelujah. They said, no, my church is fasting. Everybody in my house is fasting. No, I don't want you to go and be in trouble. If your husband does not attend with us, he is not part of the fasting, it is okay. If your wife does not attend with us, he is not part of the fasting, it is okay. Because when he is not part of the terms and condition hallelujah the terms and condition is not part of it so we will start a corporate fasting where all of us will come to agreement so that we may pray hallelujah there is power in agreement there is power in agreement when we agree then we do wonder so the second thing we say terms and condition the third thing we say when we are fasting we must be holy we must be holy. To be holy means to be put aside. Aside of sin. To be put away of uh, sin. So when you are fasting, you must carry in your mind, you must bear in your mind that you must live the life of holiness. Fasting is not saying that uh, because I'm fasting, I can live anyhow. I'm already fasting anyway. I can live anyhow. I'm already sacrificing. No. A sacrifice without obedience is not accepted by God. The Bible said that what God agreed is agreeing on is not only a sacrifice. God is agreeing in obedience. And obedience is greater than sacrifice. So sacrifice must be done in obedience. If you do sacrifice without obedience, there will, no, there will, there will be no result. So as we will be fasting, or as we decide to fast, you must know, in my fasting, I must remain in obedience to the word of God. I must remain in holiness. I must remain far away from sin. I must go away from people who can track, who can track me to sin, who can track me to sin. Go away from the people. Go away from the boyfriend, from the girlfriend. Go away from people, friends, who always brings, you know, um, um, those kind of uh, gossip, go away from those kind of friends. Tell them, my friend, I'm not going to meet you this week. I'm not going to meet you either next week because I am fasting. Because I know if we meet, we're going to gossip about some people. And by gossiping, I'm sinning against God. So go away of those kind of things. Cut something. There are some people you can block them momentarily in your, in, your, in your WhatsApp. Block them. 
Say, friends, I'm going to block you for a time. I'm in prayer. Block them. Because you know. You know, their friend who comes to you, they already call you. I'm coming so that you can gossip. So you know that the, the objective of him coming or for her coming is gossip. Block those kind of friends. I mean, I'm just saying that you should live a life of holiness. You should take away every sin. Hallelujah. And the fourth thing I said, when you prepare or when you're entering into a fasting, for the fasting to head action, you need, you need to not give yourself to your attraction, to your weakness. Remember, every one of us, we have our weaknesses. Now listen to this. All weaknesses are not necessary weaknesses. Are you getting me? All the weakness of your life are not necessary sin. But there are some weakness when you are fasting, you must go away because they will become distraction. And when they become distraction, they will become delay. They become obstacles. So I'm talking about weaknesses, but also about wickednesses. You should run away from your weakness. I know World Cup is going to start very soon. Some of us here were fan of soccer. So we'll be hanging on our TVs. Certain people, is their weaknesses. So be careful in the weaknesses. Know how to control the weakness because you are in fasting. Hallelujah. And there are some people who have other weaknesses, movies and all those kind of things. You must know I am fasting. You cannot fast and live a normal life. When you are fasting, you must have a specific and special life. Because, listen to this, fasting, it does not change God. Fasting changes you. He makes you in a better position to be heard by God. It makes you in a better position to receive or retrieve things from God. Are you getting me? Fasting does not change God. Fasting does not move God closer to you. Or does not move God far away from you. It doesn't do anything to God. God is still the same. Because the Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But when you are fasting, it will, fasting will start working in your own life. It will push you closer to God. It will give you the ability to retrieve things from God. Remember this, brothers and sisters. The Bible says he blessed us with all kind of blessing in the spirit. <laughs> He did not bless us in the physique. He blessed us in the spirit. So it is your responsibility, my responsibility to enter in the spirit and to retrieve things. And how do you do that? One of the ways to do that, it is fasting. In fasting, you are putting yourself in a better position to retrieve things from God. Because take away all those uh, things that was holding you on the earth and you release to be like you may be able to uh, reach God. Hey, hallelujah. So be careful on your the weaknesses. Certain of our weaknesses are also wicked. Weaknesses are also wicked. Things that we do which are sin before God. We must run away from them. The fifth thing I will start there today. The fifth thing we do or we need to do when you are fasting, let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 7 and verse 10. Isaiah 58 verse 7 and verse 10. The Bible says in verse 7, Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the, the poor Wanderer with shelter, when you see the naked, to clothe them, and do not turn away from your own flesh and blood. Your family members. Verse 10. And if you spend your, yourselves in, be, in behalf of the hungry, and satisfy the need of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like noon day. Hallelujah. So the fifth thing to do when you are fasting to make sure that your fasting will be heard, will have a result, 
You need to do good intentionally. Let me say it again. You need to do good intentionally. Maybe in your life, good is accidental. You were driving somewhere and you say, oh, here's a poor. And then, oh, okay, I have some coins here and then give. No. In the fasting, you do it intentionally. You prepare. That as I'm going out, I'm going to put this aside for the poor. That becomes intentional. That becomes because I want to do good intentionally as part of my fasting. The Lord is describing how you should fast in Isaiah 58. And he's saying that you need to do good. It is important for you to do good because those are the things that makes your prayer or that makes your fast to be effective. You must do good intentionally. You are no longer doing good just by accident, but you prepare yourself. You prepare that during my fast, I am going to prepare myself. I'm going to cook some food. Anyway, that food that you are keeping, you know, there are people who are making us the entire house to fast as a way of keeping food in the house. What should I do? This food is not going to make us reach the end of the month. Five days will be missing. Okay, fast of five days. But that five, five days of fasting that you are imposing in the entire house, it has nothing, no spiritual meaning. It's just that you want to make people to not eat for the first day, five days so that you can reach the month. You shouldn't, you shouldn't fast that way. You are fasting and whatever you're supposed to eat, your ration of the day, you should not keep it. You should use it. <laughs> Let me say it again. When you are fasting, the ration of the day or whatever you kept for the day shall not be kept until the end of the day. It shall be shared. Because the Bible says, when you are fasting, verse 7, the Bible says, share your food with the hungry. How can you fast and you still have your food kept somewhere? No. Your food needs to be shared. That is a true fasting. And in the evening when you'll come, you'll find a solution. But that food that you prepare for the day, that breakfast, isn't it when you are fasting you're not going to eat breakfast? Isn't it you're not going to eat lunch? Isn't it that you're only going to eat supper? You, you eat three times a day. You eat your breakfast, you eat your supper, and you eat, I mean, you eat your lunch and you eat your supper. So, because you're only going to eat supper, let's make a plan for your, for your breakfast. What do you do with your breakfast when you are fasting? I, be, I, be, I remember when I, I started my faith in 1990. I remember my first fasting. Oh, that was terrible. We were fasting from 21 hour to the following day, 21 hour. On, on Tuesday, we start 21 hours and we finish on, on, on Wednesday, 21 hours. And we start again uh, Thursday, 21 hours and we finish on Friday, 21 hours. What I was doing, I'll explain to them, please keep my breakfast, keep my lunch. I'll come to make it together with my supper together. Now, unfortunately, I did not understand. God is saying that share your food with the hungry. You see, he says share the food. So he's making it intentional. So what you do, if you have, you used to eat your, your four bread. I'm just giving you techniques for you to make your fasting to be heard, to, be, to become different. Take that, whatever you are, you are eating. Take it, put it in the plastic. You say that I am going to share it with somebody today. And you go on the street. You can, you can target somebody in your house or outside your house. It doesn't matter. But somebody must be given that portion. Take that portion, give it to somebody and tell him, I'm blessing you with this one. You don't need necessarily to tell him that uh, it was my portion because I was fasting, I'm giving it to you. Because sometimes we know how you are. You'll go to you say, you know, I'm fasting. Eh? I'm fasting, that's why I bring you this. You know, I want to, uh, this is what I eat in the morning, but I, I give it for God, I'm fasting. No, go and give it as discreet as possible to show that 
your father in the heaven shall see that you, you are fasting. Take your lunch. Go and give it to somebody. Or maybe let me make it easy for you. Transform it into a monetary value. How much is your lunch? Maybe your lunch is 100 rands. Take that 100 rands and say, today I'm going to share my lunch. Remember, I say we should do good intentionally. We are no longer doing good by external, but intentionally. So I decide that I'm going to do good. This is how you fast. Many of us, when we fast, we don't care about the poor. It's dangerous. You must care about the poor. You must not avoid the poor. The Bible says in verse 10, in verse 10, the Bible says, if you spend yourself in behalf of the hungry, you spend yourself in behalf of the, hung the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed. Satisfy their needs intentionally. You know that as I'm fasting, I must not satisfy the need of people. You can decide even during your fasting, you can go to see people in the prison. Hallelujah. The bottom line of what I'm saying, when you are fasting, you shall do good intentionally. Hallelujah. You must dress the naked. You must visit the sick. Dress the naked. You can decide that, okay, during this fasting, I'm going to take this cloth, I'm going to give to somebody. That somebody must not necessarily be somebody on the street, as I said. It can be somebody that you know, a brother in the church. Even the brother you are fasting with. You can decide when we'll be doing our, uh, our 14 days of fasting. If we say that our fasting will be in fruit, you can come to one woman that you see here, that you can see is, uh, is, uh, maybe she's struggling. You can tell that woman, listen, mama, during this fasting, don't worry about the fruit. I will be providing for the fruit. It is a way. Now you're looking at me, oh, pastor, what are you talking about now? Hallelujah. Yes, you can do that. By doing that, you are obeying the rules, the regulation of fasting. Because fasting has rules and regulation. The seventh thing, oh, no, the sixth one. The sixth one, you must forgive. Tell you never forgive. You can't be fasting without forgiveness. There are many of us, we are fasting, but we are not having forgiveness in our heart. You can't enter into the fast when you have grudges and anger. You can't enter in the fast with grudges and anger. You fought with your wife just on the 27th, the night. You tell your wife, you, 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 I'm entering in the fast. 14 days, I'm going to leave you alone. After the 14 days, we'll come back into this matter. How can you enter in the presence of God with grudges? Hallelujah. If you want your prayer to be heard from heaven, you must make sure that your heart is clean. Let me see if the Lord will give me grace to find one scripture that I want to, to, to read to you in... Um, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. I want to put it on the screen, please. Let's read it. You can't expect your fasting to have effect if you have grudges in your heart. You can't expect your fasting to have impact if there are grudges in your heart and forgiveness in your heart. Anger in your heart. The Bible says this. For I want the man everywhere to pray, lifting up what? Holy hands without anger and disputing. Now let me read it again. That man put men in like you being. Therefore, I want men everywhere to pray, lifting up. Which hand should lift up? Holy hands. That what? Anger and disputing. How can you think that this cry? When we will come here, or when you'll be in your fasting and you are lifting up your hand, God, and when God, you see the issue with God. 
When God looked at us, he doesn't see our bodies. He sees our heart. Now when you look into our heart and see that in our heart, there are grudges, anger, and forgiveness, our prayer will not going to be answered. Now grudges is what? Grudges are all those uh, kind of uh, um, things that they did to you that have hurt you. Now listen to this. It is impossible for you to control what people will do to you. Impossible. But you can control how you are going to react to what people are doing to you. You can't, you can't control what people will tell you. You can't control the comment people will do about your skin, about your height, about you fat, you small, you big, you small. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, no matter how you can, somebody will find something to complain about you. If people complain about Jesus and say you have a demon, who do you think that you are? That people will never complain about you. If you are too much tall, people say, look at you, are tall like this. If you are short like me, people will see you are short like this. If you are, you are light skin, I mean light skin, people will see you are this. If you are dark, people will go like this. They will always find something to say about you. Do not go on getting grudges on what people are saying or are doing to you. Especially when you are about to enter your fasting. Before you enter, sit, have a meeting with yourself. Have a meeting with your heart. Have a meeting with yourself. And ask yourself, is the prison of my heart free or it still has people inside? Hallelujah. Ask yourself, is my prison? Because our heart can be transformed to prisons. So you must ask yourself if there are people who are having in your heart. You know, sometimes it is so, how can I say, difficult. To find that in the church, where we come together to pray, people who are praying, they're sitting next to each other. They don't talk to each other. But yet they are lifting up their hand. They want a corporate prayer to be heard from heaven. The Bible says in the book of Acts of Apostles, the multitude of those who believe were one heart and one soul. The multitude of those who believe they were one heart and one soul. So when God sees, especially in the corporate prayer, that we have many hearts, as many people that we have there, though our prayer will not going to be answered. So if you are here, and you are about to enter into fasting, for any reason that can be, and you remember in your heart that you have something with your husband, with your wife, with your parent, with your children, with whoever, remember God is there righteous God. God is the just God. He knows who is wrong, who is right. What you need to do is to make things right before you to start that fasting. Don't enter into the where you still have people in your heart. Hallelujah. Can you please just move your brother who's next to you? Just bump him a little bit for sleeping to go away. Just a bit. Just bump him a bit. Amen. Amen. I told you about the problem with the body. When we start speaking about serious thing, the body, it, it doesn't want you to listen. It will try to make you, you know. Imagine if I was a comedian and I'm doing comedies. I'm telling you, there are people who come close here because I'm a comedian. Hallelujah. If I was Chabalala here or, or Leon Schultz, here, huh? Uh -huh. Schulster. If I was a Schulster, we would all come here and very happy to listen to me. But when we speak about things that are building our lives, I understand the body. So please look time to time, look at your brother if he's sleeping, just bump him a little bit, bump him, just to, to kick him so that he can come back into the show. You tell him, brother, you must remain in the show. Hallelujah. Can you tell your neighbor, brother, sister, remain in the show? We are in the show. Remain here. Don't go. <laughs> Praise God. Remain in the show. 
Praise God. Come with me in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 to 15. Matthew 6, 14 to 15. I don't understand how you cannot forgive. You know, there are people that say, no, what that man did to me? No, he's so bad. What that man did to me? is so bad. I can't forgive. I can't. It is impossible. There is nothing which is unforgivable. Nothing. Nothing which is unforgivable. Look what the Bible says. For if you forgive others, other people, when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. This is not me saying, the Bible says that. Next scripture, 15. But if you do not forgive other people their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. You know there are people who are so quick to ask for forgiveness. When you just say, ah, sorry, 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 ah, so, ah, sorry, ah, sorry, ah, sorry. But when it is their turn for them to forgive, it's a problem. Hallelujah. I just realized that women in, in, in relationship, they forgive husband very quickly. But a husband, when he catch the woman with just something to forgive, we must go to see the pastor, to see the bishop, to see... It's a problem. Husband, they always ask, no, forgive me again. Forgive me again. We want to be forgiven hundred times. But when it comes to our wife, we don't want them to make a mistake. Especially that kind of sin. That sin. You know that sin. That sin, when man does it, it's okay. When a woman does it, you call from, from, you know, from far. I must not find you in my house. Pack your things. Just go away. <laughs> You see, men, that is a typical man. It is not normal. The women, they have the same heart that we have. The very same pain that they are. <laughs> the very same pain that we feel, they can feel the same pain. It's the same. It's the same. It's exactly the same. Sometimes they feel even more pain. Although, they choose to forgive. They choose to understand. You know, women are so special. He can find you busy. You give explanation. She understand and forgive. But you, you go and take a machete. You must cut somebody before things. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord said, you must forgive if you want him to forgive you. So before you enter into the fasting, you must forgive. Ask yourself if you have released people from your heart. There are people that you hate in your heart. And there are people that you hate without reason. There are people that you hate without reason. Actually, you hate them because you are jealous of them. The hatred comes from jealousy. Because you can't beat them. Because you can't get what they have. Or because you are envying what they have or who they are. You start hating them out of nothing. You see that thing that you see. I don't know. I don't like that guy. Check very well. Sometimes that guy you don't like. Because he has made it more than you. But now you are. Because you can't beat him on that game. You end up hating. The Bible says he who hate his brother. He is a murderer. Find for me that scripture. First John chapter, I think, 3 verse 17 or 18. The Bible said, he will hurt, 18 I think, he will hurt his brother. He is a murderer. So if you hate me all along, you've been coming here, you hate me. For sure you are jealous of something that I have that you don't have. But let me tell you, you can't get everything. Otherwise you don't need me. God will make sure that certain things you need, you must not have them so that you may need me. I must have those things so that you may need me. And some of the things that I will need, I will not going to have them. He will put them in you so that I may need you. Amen. Are you kidding me? Amen. We need each other because what you have, I don't have. So I need you to get what you have. And what you need, you will not have them. I will have them so that you may need me. So there is nothing to be jealous. It says, anyone who hates 
a brother or a sister is a murderer. And you know that the murderer has no eternal life residing in them. Hallelujah. So if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. If you hate your sister, you are a murderer. So you must check in your heart before us to start this long fasting. Are you sure that there is nothing that you need to forgive? As I always tell you, to forgive is to give up on his right to pay. Is to give up on his right to pursue. I have the right to pursue because of all the bad things that you did to me. I have the right to continue and to make you suffer, but I just decide let it go. Please let it go. Can you tell your neighbor, let it go? No, tell him, let it go. I know it did wrong to you. I know it hurt you. I know what he did was wrong. We also know that uh, you are right. He is wrong. But for the sake of your fasting, let it go. You cannot just forgive because somebody asks for forgiveness. Learn to forgive even before people ask you for forgiveness. If you forgive, you free yourself. Because when you have grudges and hatred in the heart, the person who suffers the most is the person who's hating, not the person who's hating. So if I hate you, I am the one who's going to suffer the most. Because sometimes I will hate you when I, you are not even aware that I hate you. And when I hate you, every time I will see you, I will feel bad in my heart. I will be unable to swallow my own saliva. If it, it ever happened to you? You hate somebody when you see the person. Especially when the person is bigger than you. Is bigger than you. You can't do anything to that person. But you hate the person. What's going to happen? When you look at the person and so angry, your own water cannot pass anymore. But him, in front of you, he will open his bottle of juice. He will drink it. And he will say, ah. In front of you. While you are suffering in your heart, I pray God to make you suffer more. <laughs> so that you may release yourself out of that prison. There is nobody else who can release you out of that prison of hatred. You must release yourself. You must just decide, okay, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to release this brother from my heart. When you hate the person, when the person enter, even when you are smiling, the moment the person enter, your smile is taken away. Now, who is suffering? Is it the person you hate or yourself you are suffering? You, have, you are so angry. You say, ah, if I was having something, I can kill this person. And instead of enjoying, you are tormenting yourself. When the person is dancing, we are all dancing. You are also dancing. Your eyes were closed. When you just open the eyes, here is the person that you hate. You can't dance anymore. Start looking from... Head to toe, you look at the shoes. The shoes are not even nice. You look at the clothes. The clothes are not this one, for sure, is the Chinese. For sure. He, he doesn't care. All those things about him, he's wearing Chinese or whatever. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He is busy dancing when you are suffering. Tell your neighbor, free yourself. You must free yourself, my brother. I believe you are laughing because you find yourself one day in that situation. One day you did that and you see how painful it is. How disturbing it is. How hurtful. I mean, actually, you are hurting yourself. And you, you are the one who's losing. Because now your prayer will not going to be heard. God is not going to listen to you. You see, you must stop this nonsense prayer where you go and accusing people that you hate. Lord, you see what they are doing to me. Lord, do them this. Do them that. God will not going to do that if in your heart you haven't forgiven them. God say, to me, leave the vengeance. Don't venge yourself. Let the Lord venge you. Tell God, I forgive that person. What he did to me, Lord, is painful. Is is so painful, but Lord, I choose to let it go. I forgive them. It's fine. Lord, deal with them the way you want to deal with them, but deal with them. I am going just to put my eyes on you. Then the Lord will deal with them. If God decides to kill them, he will kill them. If God does to decide to do whatsoever, this is God. He has nothing to do with you. 
Hallelujah. So learn to let it go in your heart. Learn to take away grudges and anger. If it is possible, go and look for that brother, for that sister, and make reconciliation. Make reconciliation. I'm telling you, when you do reconciliation, you feel peace in your heart. When you see the brother, you are not disturbed anymore. I've seen people, I enter the place, the person become agitated, agitated in the left. Ask myself, they, are, they follow him, they ask him, my brother, what's going on? See, I don't like that pastor. I don't like that pastor. Ah, I like that pastor. For that. We, it, we were in a funeral. They asked me to go and share the word. When I just stood up to share the word, I just saw the guy, he packed his stuff and he left. Okay, after sharing the word, they give us food. They did not give him food because he left. For sure, he, he, he came, he went with his hunger. He left. As, when they, they told me, no, he left, I said, you must leave him. He must deal with himself. Because I don't even know him. I don't even remember his face. I don't know when I hurt him. He could have come to me and tell me this day and this day you hurt me. I could have apologized. But now I don't know. I don't even know him. They say he lives somewhere in Tabazimbi. I've been there to Tabazimbi. What I did to him, I don't know. What is going on with him, I don't know. He was so angry, so furious, he went in his car and said, okay, oh, but the food of the family is not going to eat it. <laughs> the guy left without eating. He was outside there, furious, agitated. Me, I was calm because I don't know anything. Yeah. Hallelujah. You see, when you are angry at people, you will suffer. You see, eh? you are already suffering. Please, let forgive. Let go and seek for reconciliation. If there is somebody who has done you wrong, bring him aside. In the book of Matthew chapter 18, the Bible is displaying to us the process that you should follow when you have a brother or a sister who is having a problem with you. It says that the first thing you should do, go and see that person alone. Try to set it up. It, to sort it out. It doesn't work, work, work out. Bring another brother or two other brothers. Go and try to sort it out. If it doesn't, then go and tell the pastor. If it doesn't work, it says you have now the right to consider that person as a pagan. You can leave him alone. He's a pagan. You, when you have a problem with me, without even telling me the problem that you have, I'll hear it through other people. Pastor, did you fight with that brother? Did you fight with that brother? Why are you like that? Why can't you come to me and tell me, Pastor, this is what you did to me, so that you can try to sort it out between us. Stop when you have a problem with people to go and tell about that problem to other people. It is not gospel. That is not gospel. It is something else. You go and see, do you know, do you know that brother? Are you together? Yeah. Is, is he a good brother? Yeah. He is a leader. Really a leader. I don't believe it. Then the person becomes curious. What is the problem? Then you start bringing, and this is where the devil brings some stuff for you to lie, to make the guy look bad. Please, if you have a problem with me, come and see me. Let's try to sort it out. If I am to you, go and see another brother, another sister. Come and see, see me. If I'm not, you know, giving you satisfaction, see another pastor and come see me. I don't give you satisfaction, then you consider me as a pagan. This is what Matthew chapter 18 is telling us. Hallelujah. I believe you'll forget for now. Will you? Will you? We are entering into a fasting. Let nothing hinder our prayers. The seventh thing we should do when we are in prayer or we are fasting or preparing to fast, we must plan to pray. We must plan to pray for others. We must plan to pray for others. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. Now, the Bible says, He who shower others shall be showered. He will shower others. The Bible says, a generous person will be prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be simple as that. 
Whoever refreshes other will be refreshed. So if you are coming into your fasting, if you want your prayer to be heard, don't only from the first day to the last day, you are only your problem. Only your, when somebody says, let's pray, brother, I have my problems. Please, 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 please. Let me consider on my problem. No. You must also understand that the ability, the possibility God has given you to enter in his presence is also for you to carry about others. And when you are caring about others, God will care about you. When you are caring about others, God will care about you. So if you are entering into the fast, you must not only go there for yourself. In Isaiah 58 verse 10, the Bible says, you must, exp let's read it quickly. Isaiah 58 verse 10, the Bible says, something there that I like, that you should, verse 10, and if you spend yourself, you spend yourself. Tell your neighbor, spend yourself. Spend yourself. You see, you spend yourself. Your time, your energy, your ability, you do it for other people. When you do that for other people, God will do it for you. If you want God to do things quickly for you, learn to do the very same things for other people. If you want the Holy Spirit to intercede for you, learn to intercede for other people. If you want God to give you, learn to give to other people. Because of this principle that says that the one who refreshes others will be refreshed. So when we will go to this prayer, or anytime you are entering into your fasting, let that fasting be also for other people. Have a moment today, this time, I'm going to pray for a brother in the church. I'm going to pray for that sister. I'm going to pray for that brother. There is a, a leader who told us here that he learned to pray from another brother they used to sleep together who was in the night praying for all the members of the church. He, will be, he was so amazed to see that that brother knows the name of all the people in the church. How many people's name do you know in this church? You only know your name of your husband of your children, sometimes even your maid, you don't even know the name. You call, um, uh, mm, mm, mm. no, don't call me, I'm not, mm, mm, mm. I have a name. You know how hurtful it is when you are calling somebody and you're like, mm, mm, show, say, uh, show. it's good. Please, after church, come and ask me my name. There are people you sit next to every Sunday, literally, because I know that people here, they used to sit plus man at the same place. Do you name of the brother or the sister who sits next to you. How will you carry that brother in the presence of God? Because if you ask for the name, it will give you the possibility to know the problems. Because remember, in this fasting, I want also to carry the problems of others. I want to carry the problem of others. I don't want to go gossip about the problems of others. Don't ask me my problem if you are unable to keep it. Don't ask me my problem if you are unable to pray with me and for me. So you are looking for my problem for you to mock. When I will tell you this is my problem, you start mocking me. No, look for that problem so that you can carry in the feet of God or prayer. Oh, I wish all of us can be praying for each other. I wish if you can pray for me, I can pray for you. I can spend, you see the very same energy that you are, you are making to pray for your problem. You know, sometimes when I pray for my problem, I can see, yo, if I can also pray for other problems like this. Other people. You see, when you are, you are in problem, you come to, to fast. You go to the mountain. Can you also go to the mountain when God asks you, what are you doing here? Say, God, I'm here for sister so, sister so, brother so, brother so, and me. But when God asks us the question, why are you here? God, I'm here for my problem, for my problem, for my problem. It is time for you to enter in the presence of God, carrying the problems of others, so that God can also enter in the kind of prayer somewhere for your problem. Imagine if God have to pray for you. The Bible said the Spirit of God will help us in our weaknesses. When you are busy with the problems of others, God will be busy with your problems. When you are spending time, oh Lord, look at that brother, look at that sister. I can see it does not have work. Lord, intervene in the life. Lord, that time you are spending, 
I'm telling you the very same time God is busy also spending for your problems and for your issue. If you remind God Proverbs that says that uh, the one who refreshes other will be refreshed. Please, after church, after church, at least ask me what is my name. So that you may know when you are praying for me, you can also speak my name in the presence of God. You know, sometimes I feel bad when I'm in the presence of God and God gives me the image of a person, but I don't know the, know the name of the person. I know that the person comes to church, but I don't know the name. I feel bad when I'm praying. The, the, the image came that I don't know the name. I'm like, oh God, I must know the name of this person. How can I just know the image? I need also the name. Hallelujah. Know me. Know my problem so that you can carry it in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I still having some minutes or my time is gone? Finish. Okay, good. Uh, I think I'm going to close there because I was, I'm told that I don't have minutes anymore. Remember, we are going to do it again next Sunday. Then we'll speak about other things. So today, we spoke about to forgive when you are fasting and also to pray to carry others in your fasting. I am telling you, brothers and sisters, if you start applying what you are talking about, you will see your fast going to be effective. Your fasting is going to be effective. Just as the fasting of Esther, Queen Esther, was effective. Just as the fasting of Moshe was effective. Just as the fasting of uh, the entire city of Nineveh was, was effective. Uh, the fasting of Daniel was effective. Your fasting will also be effective. Hallelujah. I want us to rise up on our feet so that we can spend some time asking God to help us to forgive. You know, there are people who are suffering from anger issue. There are people who are, who are suffering from forgiving issue. There are people here when he's angry, it is difficult for him or for her to forgive. If you have that, it is a problem. You know, sometimes it can even be a demonic possession. People are demonic possessed and they are unable to forgive because of the power of darkness that is heavy in their lives. It is time for us to ask God to help us. Look at yourself. We spoke about forgiveness today. Spoke about caring other people. But let me tell you, it's going to be impossible to care about me if you don't love me. What will give you the energy to carry me in your heart? In your prayer, it is the love that you have for me. If you love me, it will be easy for you to remember me. It will be easy for you to pray for me. Now the first thing you're going to do we are going to forgive. Don't say, oh, pastor, but he hasn't asked for forgiveness. He doesn't even care. Now the problem is about is not about him. The problem is about you because you are the one who's suffering. You are the one who's concerned. So we are dealing with you. Somewhere, God will deal with him somewhere. But we are dealing with you now. Look at yourself. Is there any need of forgiving somebody? Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your wife. Maybe your parent. Maybe your friend, your church members. You can forgive. You can forgive them. Start speaking to God. Say, Lord, help me to forgive this person. Help me to let go this anger that I have in my heart. Remember, what is done is already done. There is nothing you can do to go and undo it. If they insulted you, it is done already. If they hurt you in any how, it is done already. There is nothing you can do about what was done. But there is something we can do about how we feel about what was done. I know it is painful. What they did to you. Maybe you never say, we never said it to anybody. 
but it is hurting you it is time for you to let it go let it go those in-laws that did this and that to you you kept grudges against them you lost that job because of that person you kept grudges let it go the sooner you do the better it will be for the Lord to show you your next destination there is a next destination for you you can't go on with that anger that anger issue of what Papa did to you when you were small you were abandoned by your father you were abandoned by your so-called mother now you are full of anger against every woman you want every woman to pay what they did to you you want every man to pay what they did to you you have a problem deal with it now speak to God speak to God forgive in your heart find a way to forgive them let it go it is done already there is nothing can do about the past but you and me by the power of the Holy Ghost we can deal about how you feel about it we can deal about that right now Spirit of God is here the Paracletos the helper the comfort is here to help it's okay they did all those things to you they hurt you it's look like they delayed you but it's okay let it go it's fine let him go remember you have God and nothing can happen to you if God does not allow it if they did it it's just because the Lord has allowed it but for sure God has a purpose that he is pursuing on do them doing that seek the face of the Lord to find what is the purpose now let's say this together say Lord Jesus Lord Jesus forgive me for so much anger for so much grudges so much unforgiveness but now as I'm preparing to go to my fast I want my heart to be free I am going to let it go I am going to let it go I am going to let it go I am forgiving I am forgiving I am forgetting the past I am forgetting the past I'm forgetting what happened I am going to let it go I am going to focus in the future I am going to focus on the future on things to come not on things that has passed already Holy Spirit give me the strength to forgive to forget and to focus on the future from now on my heart is free the prison of my heart is completely empty all the doors are open I am free I am free my heart is free say Lord Jesus fill me now with your love fill me now with your love love of my enemies love of my friends in the name of Jesus I am free I am free in Jesus name do you believe that you are free now give Jesus a round of applause hallelujah